Hello, everybody. Hi, Nish. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Good evening. Hope everybody is doing good. All are safe. That's yeah. Yeah. So we have a lot of people waiting. Yes, I do see ne uh, uh, Netaji, Gustavo, and um, I'm yeah. seeing Netaji from like after a gap. Yes. So it's a it's a yeah. There are more more people saying hello. The thing is, me and Cynthia, it's it's a long term association. It's almost getting into fifth years. Five, five years association with Cynthia, right? She was mm -hmm. there with us when we started with our magazine and representing our South American side. And in fact, we have a little bit of introduction to start with Cynthia. And she's such a sweetheart and such a nice person to work with. And yeah, I'm just all good. Hear me? Yeah. Dad Shekhar, Vinod Kumar is saying hi, Hermi and Nisha ma'am. <laughs> Dad Shekhar K is saying hi, Nisha ma'am. <laughs> so let's start with the Today we, we have a uh, very, very interesting person from South America, basically from uh, Argentina, uh, Cynthia. Today we are introducing you, Cynthia Bandre. Uh, she's a naturalist and an ecologist who works closely with us, basically post trails. She works with us uh, with us as a contributing editor from South America. She takes care of all the articles and uh, editing from that part of the world. Today, Cynthia will be talking about her views on the important role of the macro world in our ecosystem. Uh, she'll share the photographs that she has been taking from Argentina and Ecuador. So let's welcome uh, Cynthia. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hermes and Nisha. And hello, all the people in the other side of the screen. Thank you for being there. Thank you for coming and uh, doing this presentation for us. And thank you for being with us. You know, that's yes. a, it's, a, it's a very long journey. It's, yeah. it's five years, almost five or six years it's getting into. So thanks a lot on behalf of Post Trails. Yes, and India is one of the backbone and one of the pillar of yes. Post Trails. Yes, <laughs> from the South no, American the, pillar. <laughs> yes. Thanks. The, the fact is thanks to you because um, it's a pleasure to work with you. and. It's a pleasure to work in a, uh, such an amazing project. So I am happy uh, to be able to put a little of me in this amazing project. So yeah, thanks to you. That's what we did to you. Yeah, thank you. All right, the screen is all yours. You can start okay. with a little bit of introduction and then go ahead with the photography. Okay, thank you. Well, so, uh, as I say, Ermi says, I am from Argentina. I am an ecologist naturalist. Um, I am nature photographer and I am specialized in macro photography. Yeah, but uh, let's start. I will speak something about a little bit about technique. Then I will speak about um, biology and evolution and, and nature. And then I will speak a, a little bit about conservation. And then at the end of the presentation, I put a picture of my chair because I know all the people want to know how I work. So yeah, they, yeah at the yeah. end of the, of the presentation, you will see a picture of my entire equipment. Yeah? Great. OK. OK, so let's start. Um, yes. And, yeah. And first, I want to talk about what is macro photography for me? Yeah, I can change the weights. Yeah, what is macro photography for me? I don't know if I change the the yeah the screen. Yeah, and for me, it's a way to discover a completely new universe that our own biology prevents us. Our naked eyes don't allow us to see, but luckily we have macro photography to enter into this amazing world. 
And through the lens, you will discover new structures, shapes, yeah. colors, and even behaviors. And for me, this is exciting because I am into photography, but I am even more into biology and ev evolution. So through the lens, I can discover the ways nature finds to survive and learn about amazing strategies. And think about this. Over 90-90% of life on Earth is smaller than your finger. Imagine you can do with macro photography. OK, now, technically speaking, we are doing macro photography when the subject in our sensor appear with the same size that has in the real life. We call life size. So we are talking about one-to-one -one magnification ratio. And what is magnification ratio? Magnification ratio is the relation between the size of the subject and the size of the subject in our sensor. Yeah, and considering the magnification ratio, we can talk about different kinds of photography. We have close-up if, if we don't reach one-to-one -one magnification. We have macro photography if we have one-to-one -one magnification ratio. We can talk about extreme macro photography if we go beyond one-to-one -one magnification ratio until 10 to 1. And we have micro photography when we go beyond 10 to 1 and we need microscopic lenses. And now, yes, I know, macro photography is a technique that involves some complexity because all the parameters are on the stream. You practically don't have depth of field. Also, the bigger the magnification, the greater the lack of light. And doing focus, especially a big magnification, yeah, doing focus is a really big deal. And also the possibility of trepidation is really big because we are not only magnifying the subject, we are also magnifying all the movements, the wind, our breath, our little shakes. And yes, there is even more. We have to work really close to our subject to get the magnification. And if you are working with flowers or textures or more still scenes, it's not a big problem. But when you are working with insects, spiders or frogs, for example, the small working distances is another big deal because the animals sometimes fly away when you approach them. And you need to be careful because sometimes even your shadow makes them go away. And when you are doing close-up photography, for example, with big subjects such as butterflies or dragonflies, you can use the automatic focus. But when you increase the magnification, you need to switch to manual focus because at those magnification, the automatic focus doesn't perform well. So my recommendation is to use manual focus. First, choose the magnification you want and then put your eye in the viewfinder, move slowly back and forth until the focus plane matches the part of the subject you want to be in focus. And at that moment, stop breathing and um, press the shutter. Yeah. And if you are working with insects, uh, in the most of cases, this part will be the eyes of the subject. Like in uh, bird photography, it's the same. So the other critical factor uh, in macro photography is the shallow depth of field. I used to work with close-up apertures to get a bit more of magnification, a bit more of depth of field. But we have another resource to deal with this problem, and it's called parallelism. If you want that all your subjects appear in focus, you need to put it parallel to the focus plane. You can see in this picture, you have the head and the tail of the insect in focus. So sometimes finding the correct angle can give us a bit more of our scene in focus. Another challenge in macro photography is the lack of light. And if you are doing close-up photography with butterflies and dragonflies, 
or another kind of big subject, you can use the, the natural light. But when you are working with really small insects and big magnification, you will need to use artificial light to help not just with the correct exposure, also the flash help us to freeze all the movements that are magnifying too. I used to work with flash because I used to work with really small subjects and because I also, I work a lot in the rainforest where the lack of light is an issue. And I work a lot at night. I love exploring the shangles at night uh, because you can find the most amazing and strange critters. And when you are using flash, it's really important to use a diffuser. In this picture, you can see the difference without and with diffuser. In this picture, uh, in, the, in the right part of the screen, you have picture with diffuser. In the other part, you have uh, without diffuser. And when the light is softer, softer with, uh, with the diffuser, you can avoid the shiny reflection of, on the eyes of the insects and on the body. And you also, you also can recover the textures. You can see in this picture, the texture in this, um, this picture in the right is really different in the, in the, in the left. So it's really important to um, use a diffuser and get a more softer light. And also, it's extremely, extremely important to use a diffuser because you are reducing the impact of the flash on the subject. So it's important you have this in mind. And yes, that's all about technique. Now, as I said before, I love exploring the shangles, learning about the strategies that living beings find to survive. I like to observe the natural process and discover amazing species and, of course, register them in pictures. And here is an example. This is stick bugs use a strategy called cripsis to go and notice and avoid predators. They have the same texture and coloration that the environment, that the environment has. The, the moss and lichens. And you can see in the small picture, can you see the bag? <laughs> Amazing, right? Yeah. And we have another example. We have moats, grasshoppers, catidis, plant hoppers, all using the same strategy to survive. You can discover all this just looking into this amazing world, and it's amazing. Another example on a stick bag blending with the, the leaves of the plants, also a frog using the same strategy to avoid predators. And also, we can have uh, spiders like uh, tarantulas using the same strategy. So, that is the, the amazing part for me. Now, another kind of picture. Uh, these little ants measure one millimeter, and that's the magic of macro photography. Impossibly to see these details with our naked eyes. They are really, really small. I think I was there more than an hour trying to get a good picture of them. They are restless. They didn't stop moving. So we need a lot of patience for this kind of photography. And now a frog. Uh, I found this beautiful frog while I was exploring the Amazon jungle in Ecuador at night. Uh, you know that most of frogs are nocturnal. So you have to go out at night to find them. And I have to say that I love frogs. I am in love with frogs. And that is one of the reasons for what I love exploring the jungle at night. Another one. And here we have an ant mimicking tree hopper. Really strange, huh? 
Yes, they are really small. They measure less than three millimeters. You can find them in the branches of plants. And when you see it, they look like ants. You can see in the small picture. And this is another strategy called mimicry. They copy another living being. So we had the strategies of crypsis when they copy the environment, and we have the strategy called mimicry when they copy another living being. So when you see in the real life, this animal just is a little point, uh, black points in the branches, just like ants. Amazing strategy. Yeah. So another one, a jumping spider. And this tiny and beautiful, beautiful spider appeared in my house during the lockdown. And every time I found a, bow, a bug in my house, I take them and I put them on the plants in the balcony. But this time, before doing that, I took this picture. She was on the screen of my cell phone. For that reason, you can see the reflection. And this spider measured less than two millimeters. Really, really small. Another one. And here we have a weevil. And a common situation you can find in the rainforest. This weevil has a fungus growing inside and outside of it. Some of these funguses act as parasites. And they can change the behavior of the insect. Uh, and drive them to a place with environmental condition they need to produce the reproduction structure and then despair their spores. And of course, then the cycle starts again in another insect. You can find this kind of situation all the time and everywhere in the rainforest. Poor insects, right? And um, yes, but it's nature. And now, yes, this is a creepy one. I know, I know that. And here we have a dead wasp and infected by cordyceps fungi, a parasitic fungi. The insects that are infected are called zombies. In that case, a zombie wasp, because the fungi Gas it mines control through a bioactive compounds that interfere with the nervous system of the victim. Really, really creepy, this one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you can also mm -hmm. can take photos of a snake with a, your macro lens. And I found this snake at night, again, exploring the Amazon jungle. And I was able to take some picture of it. It's not a venomous one, but the fact is that in that moment, I didn't know that. And I took it with my macro lens. So I was really close to the face of the snake. I have to say that I love snakes. <laughs> yeah, I love photography and they, I love to, to find them in nature. Okay, and here another extreme situation you can find if you look at this tiny worm, a caterpillar that sadly is not going to reach to be a butterfly. It's parasitized by a wasp. The wasp injects the eggs into the body of the caterpillar and inside the body of the caterpillar the larvae are born and feed on the caterpillar. And when the times arrive, the larva of the, of the wasps will go outside, breaking the cuticle of the caterpillar and begin to web the cocoon on the surface of the caterpillar. And you can see the situation here in the picture. You can see the cocoon on the surface of the caterpillar. And once the metamorphosis is complete, the wasp will have rich maturity and may live while their host will die. Yes, it's another creepy story of the natural world.
and here a wasp. Yes, yes, it's a wasp. She looks like an ant, but actually it's a wasp. And it's a female of a velvet ant. And yes, it's strange because we call them ant, but they are wasp. It's a family of wasp where the males have wings, but females don't have it. And females resemble ants. So another strategy here, copying another living being. Okay, a lot of creepy stories, but in this world, it's not only creepy stories. Uh, there are sweet stories too. And here you can see how this lady is taking, taking care of her babies. There are several insects and also spiders with maternal instincts. And that it's beautiful and it's wonderful to see in nature. Yeah. Yeah, and that's me. <laughs> We are not the only that suffer with mosquitoes and other similar insects. You can see these weevils and the grasshopper with ectoparasites, a lot of them, just like me. <laughs> and now a funny story, but we, we will lear learn about this. Just an hour in the rainforest got me this way but always in the most uncomfortable situation in nature, we can learn. And if you see the difference between my two arms, you can see that one of them has a lot more stings than the other. The arm with more sting is the one that hold the camera. So after a while, the veins swell for the weight of the gear. The mosquitoes and other flies, as sun flies, use sight and smell to detect the carbon dioxide we exhale and can detect heat through infrared vision. The primary source of infrared radiation is heat, heat and thermal radiation. Any object has, that has a temperature above absolute zero radiate waves in the infrared band. So my arm with the shear clearly radiates more waves in the infrared band and is more detectable and seem more delicious for them. So even in this uncomfortable situation, we can learn about nature. Yeah. Yeah, and you can also discover the predator hunting or feeding behavior, and you can register them, but also you can learn, you can learn about it. And here we have a stick box, a jumping spider feeding on a, a fly, a rubber fly, another spider. Yeah, and the same here, we have frogs feeding on insects, a spider and another another jumping spider feeding on ants and the same happened with the reproduction and mating behavior so you can see my picture is not just a a beautiful pic picture about uh, a butterfly my work is more um more just telling stories on ecological stories that uh, that happen in nature. The same here. The, you can see the frogs mating, and you can see the, the, this frog calling for females. He's a, a male, and he's calling for females. And you can learn a, a lot if, you, if you're looking for into this small world. And when I say that at night, you can find the stranger creatures. <laughs> Believe me, this is a grasshopper. And this one is really big, uh, maybe 10 centimeters. And that show is like a guillotine. <laughs> Amazing, right? And I have to say that I cried for ex of excitement when I found this one. 
it's really strange and it seems out of fiction. I love it. So my best advice is always be patient, practice all you can, spend time in the field. That will give you the connection with nature and you will start to learn about the behaviors of the subject and the best time of the day for each species. And you will get better mm -hmm. shots. But always, please be res respectful of nature. And in connection with my last sentence, be respectful of nature, I want to speak about something that nobody speaks. And I think it's necessary to speak about it. And it's about ethics in macro photography. Because sometimes it seems like the rules for ethical nature photography don't count for this kind of photography. Animals are manipulated. Sometimes they are mistreated and even killed. We can see this kind of picture on social media all the time and people sometimes don't know what happened behind them. And the picture looks sweet and funny. I completely agree. But behind these pictures, there, there is animal abuse. These are not natural scenes. These are no natural behaviors. These animals are tied. But most of people don't know about it or don't take the time to think about it. And they put a lot of like in this kind of picture. And these pictures go viral. And I think it's not good. And the same happened with this kind of pictures. Extreme macro photography using the focus stacking technique. The pictures are really stunning. I agree again. But behind them, in the most of cases, there are dead, frozen, or glued animals. And when I say dead, it's not that they found them, they kill them. And you even can find on the internet tutorials about how to kill an insect for macro photography and how to prepare it with different chemicals and entomologic materials. They need that the insects are in good condition and they prepare them in a way that they look like they are alive, but they don't, they are dead. And I can accept that this happened for science, but just for having fun taking photos, I think is, is not right, at, at least for me. And also behind these pictures, there is illegal market of animal. I know people that buy, for example, dead insects from Asia or tropical rainforest because they are stunning and colorful to make their photos. So I think it's a big topic to think and reflect about it. I think every living being has the right to live and every species, even the tiniest, has a role in the ecosystem and they deserve our respect. And okay, in connection with that, I am going to speak a little bit about conservation. Because uh, when we think of conservation, we quickly think about elephants, rhinos, Africa, big cats. But the fact is that there is a big number of other living beings that are in trouble. And it's necessary that we also think of them, like arthropods or amphibians, for example. Arthropods comprise the most diverse group of animals on Earth. Three quarters of all animals are arthropods. And they are really, really important in the functioning of the ecosystem. And the fact is that we are not aware of that. And for example, Arthropods or insects, they are food for a species of birds, mammal, reptile, fish, and even humans. 
There are several human cultures that feed on insects, so they are important. They also pollinate a vast majority of seeds that produce um, a, a plants that produce seeds, and that includes our crops and includes the food we eat. They also enrich the soil by recycling nutrients. Eh, sorry. Uh, recycling nutrients and disposing of dead organisms and waste. Imagine our planet without insects doing all these jobs. Unpleasant. Yeah, I believe that. And they also generate uh, products that we take advantage of, such as silk, honey, medicines, waxes, and dyes. And there are several medicines that come from insects. So they are small and maybe no so charismatic, but we need to protect them because the fact is that we need them. It's simple. And the same happened with frogs or amphibians. They are facing a big issue for several reasons, but one of them is produced by a fungus. And if you manipulate them when you are photographing them, you are contributing to the problem because you are transferring the disease from one individual to another. So it's important. We need to be aware of all the situation when we are, we are out taking photos. We need to put nature first before photography always and Timmy working uh, with extension tubes macro lens and in the front of the lens the rhinox lens a close-up lens the um, flash dedicated flash and handmade diffuser and with eye tripod and at night this this picture uh, are at night i work in the same way and just I need a flashlight to explore the channel and also to get the focus. Yeah, but uh, I work the same way in the, during the day and during the night. Yeah, and thank you, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> thank you so much, Cynthia. It was a wonderful it's presentation. Awesome. <laughs> awesome and some of them look you how do you even see those animals are there when especially when that particular one i forgot the name of it 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 got the texture of the plant on top of it and yeah it, it's so difficult to understand that it is a it's a something it's a macro no it's not some maze or it's not some plant yeah yeah, I, I, I know you need to spend time in the field and you need to to train your your vision, your eyes to find them in the, in the wild because it's not easy. It's a big deal also find the subject because chat butterflies are big. You can see it easily and dragonflies the same. But this kind of animals, they are really, really small. Some of them has a one millimeters or two millimeters. So they are really, really small. For that reason, I use the, the flash because doing photography with uh, these really little animals is really difficult with uh, with a natural light, no? You need the flash for freeze them, mm -hmm. the movement. And yeah. again, what was those bites? It was only mosquito bites or it was something else? It was some flies. Some flies. There are right. little little flies that uh, feed on blood. So yeah, <laughs> but it's not a problem for me. I am happy. <laughs> you, you see, you saw in the picture I was with a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have problem with the. Yeah. the, the in skin. fact, we have a question from Rodrigo. Do you have any advice to not to be beat, beaten by mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what even I wanted to ask because you know I, uh, I had some kind of bite from Africa and it took almost seven months to clear yeah. up the mess and they still yeah. have pain in the same place. So yeah. you don't know what is biting you. <laughs> <laughs> now the same, uh, the, the, the scares in my skin, 
yeah uh i think um uh, months yeah three yeah. months four months yeah it's yeah it's what happened but uh i am happy in the rainforest so for me bites and stings not a problem <laughs> yeah completely yeah uh, as you said about the species eyes play a major role like we need to look for it otherwise you will not see uh, just for an example last uh, weekend we had a bird photography workshop yeah. so one of the photographer who attended was a macro photographer his name is uh, melvin sunny so he just came and he uh, after the end of the session he said i got almost 10 to 15 species of macro subjects yeah. i was i was doing photography in that place for a long time i never found a macro subject there <laughs> so yeah. you look, you look for it then you will find yeah 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 you need first look for it and you need to know where they live uh in the most of the time you need to to look always for 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 the ground on for the vegetation on the ground in a down part of the ecosystem yeah so yeah but i think it's it's, it's training you need to to train your mind and to train your your eyes to find them yeah yeah uh, Gustavo has a question. Uh, Cynthia, do you have a dream species that you couldn't photograph yet? Ah, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I was I was in Ecuador uh, last year, and one of the my aims was photograph the um, tree hoppers because I know they are are a really amazing biodiversity of tree hoppers. I could find several of them, but um, there are a lot of more than I, I couldn't photograph in yet. So I need to go there again. <laughs> yeah, maybe the next year. Yeah, so yeah, but there is a lot All, also with frogs. I love frogs, so always I want to, to find them and to find new species of frogs and also with the snakes. And yeah, I have a lot more to photograph. <laughs> I know. Make us another thing. Yeah, you know, I love snakes. It's not that I hate them, but then when I see them this close, <laughs> oh <my laughs> this close, <laughs> yeah, this close uh, at night in the middle of the Amazon jungle, yeah, oh but, yeah. My. yeah, amazing. Now uh, they 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 are amazing creatures. So, yeah, no, I had I have we had a very bad experience. In fact, we were doing an exhibition in a school, and we exhibit, and there was a spectacular uh, photo from a, uh, a photographer based in UAE of uh, I think it was a uh, horn viper right Hermi? Horn viper. Yeah fabulous I haven't heard a single negative comment about that picture so far but then a lady walked into the school and she was so panicked after seeing a picture she yeah. went to the uh, you know, head teacher's office and asked us to remove because she was panicked yeah so we yeah. come across some people who are crazy but then you know seeing it that is after seeing a picture so i was thinking if she is ever going to see this one what's her <laughs> reaction she was saying over there <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know for some people it's difficult but i i i think that the knowledge makes a difference yes yeah. i think it's really important to spread the message uh, I think that is the most important part. So the knowledge always makes the difference. So, yeah. yeah, all these animals are so beautiful and they're so harmless until unless we harm them. No, <laughs> no, yeah. Really. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And we have a question from uh, Swedapriya Sharma. I have seen a few photographers used chloroform to numb them. Uh, is that true and can it be done? Again, please, I don't, I didn't understand you. I have seen a few photographers using chloroform to numb the subject. Ah, yeah, yeah. There Is are a lot true? that can it be done? No, it's true. I, I I mentioned that in the in the part of ethics in macro photography because this kind of thing happened all the time with macro photography. So for me it was important using this opportunity to speak about it because yeah sometimes happen and you don't see photographers that kill a deer for take a photo but you can see a lot of photographers that can kill an insect for just for doing photography so uh it's for me it's, it's horrible it's not good so for me it was important to mention in this presentation 
because uh, also happened that the, the people don't know that all, all this kind of thing happened behind this picture. So it's necessary that the people know also. Yeah, yeah when, when I used to see this, uh, you know, frog with the leaf in the rain and all that looks so cute. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it, is it possible? Usually frogs love rain. So why is it trying to be under a, a mushroom or under the scent? Look as if it's with a umbrella yeah. kind of thing. So it was, uh, and like, you know, hang, being in one leg, those were kind of quite interesting but then yes after once i we got into photography we do yeah. a bit of research and get to know about these things but yeah. it's very sad how can people be so self-centered and uh, yeah give a wrong message yeah, yeah. But, but happen happen a lot because this kind of picture you see in social media yes uh, a lot of the time and these pictures are viral because people don't know what happened behind. Yeah. And they put a like, like, because, yeah, it's funny as it's cute. The picture is cute, but it's not, I think it's not good. And I think it's, it's, it's necessary to explain to all the people that this is not good. Huh? True. Yeah. When, when it comes to micro, even though I never agree on, uh, you know, uh, killing an animal just for photography, but a lot of people do it on science side as well. Uh, for yeah, recommendation. that's that's completely different. But again, I still feel every every animal or every species have the right to live. It's not guinea pigs. Yeah, totally. But uh, at least for science, have a, a a reason. But just for having fun, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's not good. I think it's not yeah. not good. True. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a question from Yeshwan Mahendran. How do you find them in the night, ma'am? Really tough. Using a torch, torchlight might trigger them to hide. Uh, at night, I I I, I love explore the the shangles at night. It's uh, magical. It's um, really mysterious. And I use a, a flashlight just for explore the shangle and for walking into the shangle and for avoid. Uh, uh, go through uh, a snake. I have an accident. So, will it <laughs> yeah. trigger them to hide the toss light, flashlight? I know. No, in the in the most of cases, they don't have a problem with the flashlight. Yeah. yeah. But in the areas where you go, is there poisonous snakes? Uh, no, the the snake from this presentation. There are no venomous. Okay. But yeah. Uh, but is there anything in, in the area where you go? Are there yeah. venomous ones? Yes, are really, really venomous ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I was in Costa Rica. I have an encounter with a um, botrops. It's a kind of um, uh, a snake. It's really venomous. And it's the, the, the snake that more people kill in Costa Rica, for example. I have an, a really close encounter. And of course, I took the photo, <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, and also in Ecuador and also here in Argentina, we have a venomous snake, but I think the important is to be careful and respect nature and respect the time of nature and, and, the, and the rhythm of nature, no? Yeah. So what's your tip on photographing snake specifically? Again, what? How do you, how do you approach snakes? Uh, uh, carefully, yeah, and <laughs> uh, slowly, and I try to 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 read the behavior and to read the the corporal uh, language of the okay. animals. Yeah, that's that's the way. Yeah. Now yeah. we have a question from Raj Shekhar. Uh, do do you write any journals of your findings? See, see, uh, if I write. Yeah. Do you write any journal of your findings? Uh, yeah, I try to. I always try to to share a little comment in my picture when I share in in social media, and I am building a part in my website uh, that is called Tale from the Shangle. So the idea oh. is to 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 write about the behind the scenes, but also about all these uh, creepy stories in the shangle and all these these kind of stories. Yeah, to, to let the people know what happened in these kind of places. Yeah. 
uh, Rodrigo is asking, do you gain uh, do you gain much closer with extension tubes on a hundred mm macro lens? Does yeah. it make sense to use all the all three together? Yeah, yeah. I I I used to work with the macro lens and the close up uh, lenses in the front of the lens, and sometimes I I add the extension tubes. Because uh, when you are photographing animals that has uh, one millimeter, which just with your macro lens is not, uh, you need more magnification. So for that reason, I I add the close-up lenses and I add the extension tubes, and in this way I can get more magnification. And of course, I need to stay more closely to the subject for get the magnification. Yeah. So with all the this equipment, with the extension tubes, is the macro lens, and with the close-up lenses, I have to photograph them on just uh, millimeters. I have to stay really, really close to the subject. Okay. Yeah. So people, uh, generally macro photographers use, advice to use tripod. Yeah. Why, why, yeah. why, why are you not using tripods? I don't use it because, uh, when you need to work really, really close to the subject. So if I find a bug in a, in a, in a plant, in, if I need to put the tripod there, I need to put the tripod uh, inside the tree, inside the plant. Okay. And it's a, it's a problem. So for me, it's more easily work without tripod because also I, I can move in and took different angles. And it's, yeah, it's, for me, it's more easy. And sometimes- and then, How do you get the sharpness? Yeah. In lovely conditions. Yeah, I, I work with close apertures, uh, something like 18, 22, something like that. And I. What shutter speed do you usually get? And again? Shutter speed? Shutter speed, uh, 200, something like that. But oh. I use the flash for the reason because oh. shut with a really close aperture, aperture and uh, um, quickly uh, shutter speed. Yeah, the light is not, not enough. So you need to use the flash for that reason. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, for a beginner, what equipment do you suggest? Uh, uh, anyone you can you can get. I start with a um, not uh, with a not a reflex camera. I start with a, a compact camera, a bridge camera, and the results are amazing, the same. So it's not the important equipment, it's important the photographer. <laughs> and it's important to learn about the behavior, to learn about the technique, and to learn how to approach them. So that is the important, not the, the equipment. Uh, can you just explain about the diffuser you made? Melvin is asking. And yeah, is uh, I, I will I, I give me a second. Yeah. Yeah, this one is my diffuser. It has cardboard, uh, metallic paper inside, just uh, white cloth. That's all. Really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really cheap and works really really well. Yeah, you put the flash here. That's all. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's, it's so awesome. You know, the, the, it, I think the first thing in macro, you, you, you really need to train your eyes to see them. Yeah, yeah totally. totally. And, and there is a concept of stacking pictures and all. You completely destroyed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think most of the true nature, you know, I, I, I know a couple of people, I think definitely at least one or two people who are into micro, who, when I see their work, definitely great work, but these people work closely with National Geography and WWF, so they will have their own reason to do that. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I know a lot of, you know, people who are in social media who do the same which is which is quite sad as an art form i can understand but still killing an animal for this is yeah it's does it make any sense no in any sense totally any sense yeah That's yeah we so need to respect the subject yeah any cost yeah yeah so that's all the questions that we have mm -hmm. today great thank you, thank you again thank you so much Appreciate for the presentation no. 
thanks to you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a pleasure, dear. It was, it was really amazing. Thank we, you. We have one more question before you leave. Okay. How do you approach jumping spiders? I tried many times and it was difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. They are restless. But uh, you need you need to be patient for this kind of photography. It's not uh, it's, it's, there is no secret. You need patient, patient, and train your eyes. And yeah, it's this way. The, the, the jumping spider are really restless. They didn't stop moving. Uh, you need to have the patient and stay there with them. And yeah, and try and try and try and try and practice, and you will get it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah, totally. Great. And especially the one with the, I, you know, that is, it was a very positive thing using your mobile phone screen as the base yeah. and you got the reflection and this yeah. two millimeter thing. Yeah. One millimeter. Yeah. One millimeter thing can project at a different angle. And yeah. it's amazing, you know, phone, I'm, I'm seeing phone used for a good purpose in photography other than. <laughs> photography. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It, it was amazing. Yeah. We, we have one more technical question. Uh, is using a 70-200 f2.8 lens with an extension tube practical? Yeah, you can use it. Yeah, yeah, always. If you need more magnification, you can use it. Uh, you can add uh, the extension tube for a macro um, close-up lenses. Yeah. But yeah, the difference, the output you get in 70-200 and a macro lens is completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, common lens, uh, yeah, it's different because the macro lens is building to to get the focus really close to the subject. So that is the difference. With the, the common lenses, you can't um, get focus close to the subject. You need to start, stay to a certain distance. Yeah, okay. that's, that's the, the question. And I think the magnification difference is also different. I mean, I, I tried, I'm, I'm trying a bit of macro over here with... <laughs> with all possible things I have. But when I see the result, it, it definitely, definitely the macro lens photography as well as you know, with the other lens, there is a huge difference, but it's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, and it's great. Uh, I have a question from Rodrigo on the diffuser. Do you think that the diffuser shapes make difference for reflection, like square versus circular? Yeah, yeah. If I took the picture just with us, we uh, especially for example in champion spider, you will get the this this uh, uh, shape in the reflection. But I, I give me a second again. I add this one is polyethylene, so when I add this at the front of the lens, the reflection is circular. Okay. Oh, okay. So you you can see in my picture the difference if I took the picture with this kind of diffuser or with all this one. Okay. The 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 shape of the the reflection in the eyes of the subject is different. Oh. Yeah. In the eye of the subject of a one millimeter thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. In one millimeter, you can see, you can see what well, is the magic of macro. You can see one millimeter and the eyes are just a couple of millimeters. And you even can see the, the reflection of the flash in the eyes. That's the magic of macro. And yeah. is there any career options we have in macro photography? Again, that both is there of any you... Is there any career of, uh, opportunity we have in macro photography? Yeah, 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 I think macro photography is not just a, a, a way to to practice photography. It's a pre, uh, preparation for the life because you need to to grow inside the patient. And yeah, I think it's, it's useful for the rest of your life then. <laughs> so that's... Uh, yeah, uh, see, the problem is when in most of our shows, this is one question we get. Is there a way to make a living out of it, whether it is wildlife yeah. or bird or how can you earn yeah. money from macro? Is there a possibility? Uh, it's the same with bird photography. Uh, it's really complicated. <laughs> I have another shop. I work in science in a science institute. So, yeah, yeah, it's difficult. I am trying 
to, 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 but no, no, it's not easy. And the macro is a, a really close uh, public because it's just it's so specific. Yeah, so it's difficult. But you never know. Maybe <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know. That's true. Yeah, you never know. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank, Thank you. you again, Cynthia. Thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you next time with another experience. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank bye, you. bye. So that was Cynthia with some amazing, amazing images. Oh my God! You know you how? Do, how do you find them? And can you just make this close with a macro? Ah. Oh. So that was fabulous. Yes. And you can see her works. I have me can be shared uh, her Instagram handles. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so that was it. And um, uh, so what's 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 there for a uh, next Wednesday? Coming Wednesday, hear me. Surprise. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> when are you going to reveal the surprise? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, I've I've shared the uh, her Instagram ID as yeah. well. Facebook so, and Instagram and, ID. And yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you on Wednesday evening. With another evening. session. Until then, take care of your health. Use your mask, hand sanitizers, social distancing. It's important. Yeah. So bye bye. Thank you all and see you soon. See you.